Coach, congratulations, first of all, on another uh, Montverde Invitational Championship. A lot of people would probably think that these are just easy to come by, but I, I can tell you from watching this game tonight that these are hard-fought wins, and it tests your teams. Well, in our tournament, we always try to get as many good teams as we can. Usually it's four Florida teams and four out-of-state teams, and we try, if we can, to see if we can get – five teams that are ranked nationally and you know sometimes we achieve that obviously this year you have Brewster you know who's been in the top 10 and I think they're sitting somewhere around there now you have Prolific that's you know depending on what poll two three in the country ourself number one and Oak Ridge who in the high school max prep poll I think is in the top 10 and, and the other polls might be 25 23 so you have four teams and you know three teams roughly in that top 10 four in the top 25 and, you know, usually the first-round matchups are good. This year we have one that was a little bit lopsided, but a school like a couple guys transfer out that were high-quality players. So it was almost too late at that point to replace a team for three games in three days, you know, schedule-wise. And everybody that follows this, this level of basketball knows that there is a ton of talent uh, that it goes out on the floor from, from your team. But I don't know that they understand the depth of that talent, and I saw that uh, in the first game when you guys blew a team out. But the the reserves that got to play, uh, guys like uh, uh, Luca, is that yeah. right? Uh, I enjoyed the heck out of watching just watching him play because he balled out every minute that he was in that game. Yeah, well, our bench is good. Lucas Lima from Brazil is a really good player. You know, he's just behind you know six seniors that are. Been, most of them been in the program multiple years except Rob Wright. And he's, you know, and these these are six of the top 30, 40 guys in the country. So you're in a situation where it's just going to be hard to crack that group. And when it's a close, if, especially if it's a competitive game. And then Caden Allen is, you know, many polls at top 15 and top 10 kid himself has Caleb Gaskins and Dehani Miller. You know, those guys could all play. And a couple of those guys will definitely be starters and key guys for us next year. It's just that they people didn't really see it this year. But you know, like I said, Caden Allen's going to be a big-time pro. If he gets two more inches, he's just, you know, really, really tough, really terrific. It was just, you know, again, the experience of the older guys at a game like tonight has had to wait your turn. Uh, people probably say, oh, yeah, it's easy to win when you got talent. Well, how hard is it to manage all that talent? Because uh, I know that the people have egos and there's this and there's that, but you can tell with this team – it's not that that's not the case. Everybody is wanting to win, but for the right reason. Well, I think it's the communication. One, you got to build a culture as a school, as a basketball program, and then you got to make sure these kids you coach them hard, but you're you're very transparent and honest to them about where they are and what, in relation to where they're trying to go. And you know, we constantly again say, hey, this year, twenty-two. I think it's twenty-two out of thirty rookies. We're in the G League at some time, many for a long period of time. Very few guys are going. I think something like two guys take like 65 to 75% of shots on every NBA team. You know, so you're looking at a thing. You're probably not going to be one of those two, especially early. <laughs> so if you don't know how to play with others, you don't know how to guard, you don't know how to fill a stat sheet up in different ways, you're probably going to struggle to get on the court. And if you can't do those things, unless you're an incredibly gifted scorer, you may not be in the league, period, or have a cup of coffee and be out. If you can do those things, it gives you a chance to start growing and get like a Siakam. He rebounds, he guards, and then he was able to control, grow his career to become a very good offensive player. Where if he didn't have that early where he was at, he might not have ever had that opportunity. Kawhi Leonard was another guy. He was with the San Antonio Spurs. He had to play a different role, but he got him on the court. And then he was able to develop into a star because he had that, those possibilities. Some guys won't be able to do that, but at least it gets you on the court and gives you a career. Indiana Pacer fans are damn sure glad to have Pascal Siakam as well. A recent trade there, uh, coincidentally. So uh, a lot of Indiana connections there. What started the, I don't want to call it a pipeline, but the, the communication, the relationship with Indiana. There's been several players now come from Montverde that in, in, end up at Indiana. Well, I, I just think it's, you know, obviously Indiana's got great tradition in basketball, a great fan base. As much as anybody, when we have something said about our team, the responses from Indiana are more from than any other uh, school, period. You know, so I think that resonates with the kids. The other thing is, you know, Coach Woodson obviously has NBA experience, you know, and, and 
you know, for our guys, it's been good. Jalen Safino Hood, obviously, you know, got a chance to, to play the point there. And, you know, one year he's in a league. Obviously, he's got a lot of development still to be end up being a long-time pro and a good pro. But I think he'll get there because he's dedicated. Malik Renault is really, a, you know, a terrific college player. Is he undersized for the NBA? I, I, you know, he's going to have a chance because he, 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 he's getting in, his body looks great. He's getting in great shape. He's probably averaging 13, 14 a game. And, you know, for Liam McNeely, it's a really good choice because, you know, depending on who they get in the portal, but I think they're going to, you know, run action, run stuff for him. And that's the biggest thing with Liam. He needs a point guard that's looking for him in transition, and he needs somebody that will run some stuff for him, either pin down to jump chops or assume handoffs, get him going downhill. He's better at getting to the rim than people realize on those plays. Malik Renu, uh, Indiana had a game against Illinois today, and he just he pretty much put Indiana on his back. And he has been that kind of player here of late, especially if they don't have Kalel Ware. Malik Renu is usually having a good game, and he's he's a workhorse. Yeah, and, you know, he, he's just developed nicely each year. His first year here, he had, as, a ju- as a junior, he probably played eight minutes a game, sacrificed, played behind some guys with more experience, Jalen Duran, and then he came into his own the following season. And, you know, the it's like Derek Queen here, who Indiana's recruiting. He's just made, you know, great – progress each year and learning how to play harder once he gets in a our weight room and our our guys here do a really good job but you don't have the nutrition and at at certain age 18 19 20 you really start to expand your body too and you know Derek's going to end up you know by the middle of next season he's going to have an incredible his body's gotten a lot better this year you know credit to our weight staff but next year with, with the proper nutrition and everything else and his age now He's going to end up being a beast inside for somebody. He's such a good passer and skilled player. Um, if he could, you know, and he's chopped the ball from the fouling well. He's just got to do some, about four months of really readjusting his shot because he's got a nice touch. If he can become a good screen and pop guy, he's got a chance to be a pro, you know, because he's so versatile. Let's talk about Liam McNeely uh, headed to Indiana after you guys get done with him, uh, winning your uh, whatever national champion number national championship yeah. it would be. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what do you, he, he's obviously someone that they need his shooting. Uh, they they're that's where one of the areas where they really lack. Yeah. And like tonight, he had a an off game last night, but he yeah. didn't even really push it. He did, only took five shots, but he comes out tonight, nails that first uh, three point shot at the top, and then it's it's on for him. Well, the, the funny thing is, if I'm an NBA scout, I love that he didn't score last night. And he didn't force things. It's almost like, hey, minimally, he could be Kyle Corbin, come in and one playoff game, he gets 14. The next game, they marked him, they stayed with him. He was one for four from three because they didn't give him any good looks. And then they forget about him again. And then he has 17 for the Cavs yeah. with, with, with Kyrie and, and LeBron. And it's, you know, I think that's the, the, the low side for him. He has a side to go past that, I think. Um, he's gotten a lot better at shooting off the move. Has he, when he was first really just an open shooter, now he's become a guy you can run some flips to in the jump shots, you can run from closed uh, elevator plays and those type of things. And lastly, I'll say this, one of our main guys in Indiana is Andrew Nemhart, who when you talk about a guy who's a second round pick, but went through a system, went through a culture, was unselfish, he probably averaged, you know, 10 points a game here, but he was with good players, you know, a number of guys that are in the NBA, and he knew that he accepted. That's how I'm going to get to the NBA. Can I go? Or can I be great in pick and roll? Can I get the better players the ball? And can I be okay if I start and play 30 minutes, or if I play four because it's a matchup situation that, that's better to have TJ in or somebody else? And that's those are the type of guys you win with, and those are the type of guys you build the culture. But I got to get back out there. <laughs> All right, Coach. We Thank appreciate you. you. All right, buddy. Appreciate you.